In this tutorial we're looking at constructor functions and we're also um, looking at doing some things with the um, prototype of the constructor function. So let's just go over to the code here and we're creating a variable foo which is set to um, a function, set to an anonymous function which takes a string and this dot property is set to string. So when we use the this keyword, when, when we create a new object with the um, new keyword uh, this is bound to uh, <clears throat> is bound to the function's prototype. So this dot property is set to string. Okay, and um, after that we are writing out. Okay, does foo dot prototype exist? We're going to check what this is right now, and we're going to check if it evaluates to true or not. So you'll see that I use the double equal sign here. So we're not checking if it's identical to the boolean true. We're checking if it evaluates to true and then I'm uh, console locking the window so um, let's take a look at that and if we refresh here you'll see that foo.prototype it is defined and it's um, it's showing that it's an object but then if we checked if foo.prototype evaluated to true it gave us back false which is strange because um, we see here that it's an object so um, if we if we look at the console here and console and then into the window and we go down to foo we'll see the prototype property right here and if I open that up we see that it has two properties in it which is constructor and uh, underscore underscore proto okay um, so we can see it's true it does exist there but it's got two properties in it but I think these properties are not enumerable so because these properties are not enumerable, um, it's showing it as false, okay? And, um, you know, we could do, oh, we could do a test on that. We could try, um, we could try console logging out um, foo dot, you know, pro, prototype dot length. I think that should work. And we have undefined. Maybe that's not um, the best way to check, but um, if we if we uncomment this next part here, um, I'm creating a variable ABC which is set to um, an empty object, and then I'm checking if the empty object is um, is true or not. So if it evaluates to true, and if we refresh here, we'll see that an empty object evaluates to false. So um, I think that might have been what was happening up here was that because uh, we couldn't see any of the properties in it it was evaluating to false there and we can do a check on that later because later on um, we do put an enumerable property inside foo.prototype so I think we can um, save this one and we can run it again later yeah like I said foo.prototype exists here and has two properties those properties are the constructor method we saw and also the pro method but they were not enumerable and in Chrome you'll see that actually um, the enumerable and uh, non-enumerable ones have a little bit different color the the ones that can't be enumerated um, they're in sort of light pink and um, the ones that can are in sort of a purple color so let's go back to the code here <clears throat> And um, the first thing we're doing here is we're, we know that foo.prototype is an object here, so we want to loop through it. And the way we loop through um, an object is like this, with the property name and then the property's value. And we can see if this um, writes anything out for us. Just refresh here, and there's nothing. Okay, so there was no, we know there's properties there, but nothing that we could enumerate. Okay, um, the next thing we do, let's um, uncomment right here. And what I'm doing here is kind of trivial. I'm just uh, I'm checking if this um, if this variable foo dot asdf asdf, which we haven't defined yet, um, if that exists, because I just want to compare um, the difference with um, foo dot prototype, which could be showing up as an empty object. And we'll just refresh here. And we'll see that's undefined. 
So we're able to tell that foo.prototype foo dot prototype exists because uh, I'm thinking, yeah, foo dot prototype that is enumerable, but the properties within it were not. So that's why um, that's why we weren't finding anything inside there. Let's uncomment this next part, and the next thing I'm doing is we're doing a few checks here. So the first word thing we're checking is if um, foo dot underscore underscore proto underscore underscore is referencing function dot prototype. So the triple equals here is going to mean that this is referencing this. They're they're referencing the same object. And after that, we're checking if um, foo dot underscore proto is equal to foo dot prototype. And then if foo dot prototype is equal to function dot prototype. And let's just see what results we get there. And we can see the only one that's true is um, foo dot underscore underscore proto is referencing function dot prototype. Okay, so if we go back to our browser here and we open up the window and let's go back down, let's go back down to our foo and open this up. And it's a bit difficult. And we open up this underscore underscore proto. So we'll see we have the two different things here. And these are two distinct different things. Um, they're obviously not equal to each other. They they don't reference the same thing. We have the um, prototype property right here. And if we open that up, we see it has a constructor function in it. Okay. And obviously everything is going to have this, everything is going to have its prototype in JavaScript. But under prototype, we have the constructor function right there. And if we open up um, underscore underscore proto and look at that, we'll see all these things like apply, arguments, bind, call, so underscore underscore proto in this case is the same thing as function dot prototype. It's referencing function dot prototype, so that's why we're getting a true right here. Now let's uncomment the next bit. And so our function foo inherits from function dot prototype, which itself inherits from object dot prototype which is the top level object in JavaScript, okay? And any sort of implementation of JavaScript, whether it's, you know, on Linux using Node or um, in a browser, the top level object is object.prototype, which um, everything inherits from. And if we try to do something like object.prototype dot, you know, proto to find the prototype of object.prototype, well, this is going to return null because object.prototype is the end of the line. And let's see that in the browser. And we'll see that um, object.prototype here, that return an object, and well, that this evaluated to an object, of course, which is itself. And um, object.prototype dot underscore proto, this just gave null. That doesn't exist. Okay, let's move on. So foo is a function object, okay? All functions in JavaScript are object. So it has a prototype. And because it has a prototype, we can assign it methods, like the getString method. So here we're doing um, foo.prototype.getString, and that's set to a function. And this function is going to um, return this property, okay? So remember we when we used this before, uh, if we go to the top here, this dot property is set to string and this was bound onto the prototype, okay? So right here we're inside the prototype and um, you know if you if you haven't seen if this looks weird to you, basically this whole thing is getting assigned this function, okay? So then how can we invoke this? Well, so if we did something like just put over here this, and then we put the um, you know the parentheses the right of it. Now that's being invoked. Okay. So um, foo.prototype.getString is set to this function declaration. 
So if we put on the parentheses right here, we can invoke the function. Um, let's keep going down here. If the prototype property didn't exist, we would get a type error assigning a value to a non-existent property. Okay, so um, instead of this prototype right here, if I put whatever, okay, that wouldn't work because we can't assign a method or a property to another object that doesn't exist. Okay, so you know this this object here is a property of foo, and this has to be defined um, in order to put something onto it. So the only reason this works is because prototype um, already exists. And let's look at our next loop here. So we're doing our loop again here, which is for all of the properties in foo.prototype, um, write them out here. Okay, so before when we did this, uh, this same loop, we didn't get anything back, but now we've put on a new method onto our prototype, which should be enumerable because it's created by us. And let's take a look at that. Just refresh here. Okay, so now we did this check, and this is what we got back. We got um, get string was the property name, and its value is a function. And then we get the string rep representation of the function right there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to instantiate our objects. And so here we have um, var my foo is set to new. We're using the func our function constructor right here, and then we're passing it hello world, and then we're creating another object right here, myfoo2, and that's using the same function constructor, but this time we're passing it in goodbye world. Okay, so what we can do after that is we can output them. So we're outputting, um, and this is the key part right here. What we're outputting is myfoo.getString. Okay, and you'll notice we never we never created this get string method on my foo. We never did this in our program. What we did was we did it on the prototype right here. Okay, so what happens is when we call this method on my foo, it is going to look for it in itself, and if it doesn't find it in itself, it's going to go to its prototype, which it inherits all things from. And in this case, it's going to find it in its prototype, and then we're going to, um, you know, the function is going to get executed. Okay, so let's look at that in the browser, and we'll see um, my food .get string is values to hello world, and the second one is goodbye world. So based on some of the reading I've done on JavaScript, I know that, um, you know, using um, using function constructors, it isn't the recommended way to make um, objects in, in JavaScript, but I still think it's useful to go over this because um, you can learn a, a lot about um, the prototypal inheritance of JavaScript um, from, from uh, function constructors. Okay, so let's keep going with this. Uh, I think I'm almost done. So the next thing I'm doing is um, we're doing we're doing a little check here. So we're checking if my food dot underscore underscore proto dot constructor is equal to food dot prototype dot constructor. And after that we're checking um, my food dot proto dot get string is equal to this. Okay. And let's take a look at that. And we'll see that those are both true. Okay. And let's um Let's open up our uh, console one more time here. And okay, let's look at our window. And we're going to go down to, um, we're going to get into our foo function right here. And let's open that up. And then I'm going to click on, um, let's see, what did we check here? We checked, um, the first thing we checked was foo.prototype.constructor and we're checking its value. So this is our this is our function and here we have um, our object, okay? So a part of the object is going to be equal to 
something of its function constructor. So let's first look at foo.prototype.constructor and just open that up here. So foo and then prototype and then constructor. So we see construct here it says function string and you can see my comment right here. Um, this function should be passed one argument during instantiation. <clears throat> that was at the um, top of my code right here. Okay. So um, and the next thing we want to check is if that's equal to um, my foo dot underscore underscore proto dot constructor. Okay. So if we go um, back here, so that was our function constructor, and now we need to go down here past all of these and go to um, let's see, yeah, my foo right here, and we're going to open up my foo, which is our um, our object we instantiated. And then we're going to click underscore underscore proto right here. And then we'll see the constructor right here, function string. And then you can see my comment there. And the second one was um, checking foo.prototype.getString. So let's, um, let's look at that. And we'll go back up to our foo right here. And here we see, yeah, foo. Oopsies. Um, let's go down. Yeah, foo, and then prototype, and then get string, and the function. And you can see I won't go back to it, but you can see that's equal to uh, my foo dot proto dot get string. 